Now, what I'm about to say might be hard for some of you to hear, but you need to hear it. The new camera that just came out doesn't suck. You suck. Now hear me out, I'm not projecting ire here simply to insult you. Believe it or not, I'm actually here to help. And with any issue, admitting you have a problem is the first step to recovery. Now I have no stake in the game, I'm all set either way, but I am here to help you face the music and get on that path to recovery so that no matter how sucky of a camera it might be, you my friend are still gonna be able to shoot a film like a genuine BAMF with that sucky camera. But first, if you're new to the channel, if you're just joining us, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Now, what brought this on? Why am I even taking the time to talk about this if, like I said, it doesn't really affect me personally? After all, I shoot largely on very dated equipment and don't rely on the latest and greatest tech to get me by. Well, frankly, I just don't like the negative attitude that fills the air whenever there is a new camera announcement and people don't get exactly what they want, regardless of how ridiculous their demands are. Are. Because honestly, anything we get moving forward is amazing, and yet all some people seem to do is complain that the new camera announced doesn't have perfect autofocus or 10 million ISO and in body image stabilization, or it's the wrong shape, it doesn't make them a pizza. They want all of that and they want it for cheap, and when they don't get it, suddenly these companies that are crafting miracles to bring out new equipment are suddenly the enemy. Suddenly they don't care and don't listen to the fans and it's absurd. As Louis CK once said in an earlier act, everything is amazing and no one is happy. And that's exactly what's going on. So once more, if you really think that new camera that just came out, whatever it is, fill in the blank, if you really think it sucks, then the reality is you suck. And that's fine because everybody does at some point, but the goal should always be to get better and the problem is that the demands you have that aren't being met are for things that won't actually make you better as a filmmaker. So if the camera sucks because it lacks autofocus, it's because you don't know how to focus a camera and you will never learn if you always demand and always depend on autofocus. And maybe you think you need autofocus for your gimbal. Truth is you don't. Just about all gimbals on the market have a focus wheel and they're amazing. They give you total control of your lens learn to use it. Autofocus takes away control. It doesn't let you make the decision of what to do with your image. Now, I don't want this to turn into too much of a rant because there's obviously arguments and excuses on both sides of this issue. There always are. So here's the point that I want to make. The cameras on the market 10 years ago were quite a ways behind what is on the market today. And yet people still made incredible images with them. Those images more than hold up today and even surpass what some of the images are coming from the newest tech. So why is that? How is it possible that the original Blackmagic Pocket Camera, which could only shoot HD up to 30 FPS, had a 1600 ISO limit, no real autofocus, no IBIS, but was used as a B or C cam to the Ari Alexa in many big budget films and is almost indistinguishable from it in a shot by shot comparison. And this isn't the only camera. The old Canon 5D and other legacy EOS cameras have also been used in countless large budget productions as well, alongside six figure cameras that were being used as A cams. If those 10 year old cameras were good enough then and still hold up today, why are the new cameras that are coming out now, which are far superior in just about every technical aspect, suddenly not good enough? Well, my hunch is user error. What's more, and maybe the biggest point I'll make today, I firmly believe that as technology advances and AI starts to enter our cameras, those of you depending on autofocus, IBIS, high ISO, et cetera, you're gonna be the first ones to lose your jobs to AI cameras because you have nothing to offer that the camera can't already do without you. So picture a world, if you will, where all a company has to do is release a drone or set a camera on a wheeled tripod and the camera does all the work. Then the AI and the computer edits the footage for them and in less than a day, they have their final video, which they love. Why are they ever gonna hire anybody when they can invest once in a camera with AI and never deal with a freelancer or an internal video geek again? Personally, I don't think we're that far away from that reality. And the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to survive, you need to offer something more, something that the automated settings can't offer, control decision, precision from a human over your focus, over your settings, commanding the light around you, or learning to work with it, finding ways to stabilize your shot and still allow you full manual control of your image. And the less automated the system is, 
the more ability you have as an artist to truly leave your unique fingerprint on your work and your images. Now this is part of why I personally hate gimbals for anything beyond basic tracking shots. I think videographers who just live on a gimbal because it's steadier, they have far less control over the precision of their shot and I think in the end that hurts them. Now all that aside, maybe that's not what you wanna hear. Let's talk for a minute for the sake of argument about why you're not getting all the stuff you're asking for with the release of the new cameras. Now I'm definitely not against advancement of technology. Obviously we got here by pushing the limits and chasing the unchaseable. Technology in these cameras is amazing and it only continues to get better and more affordable. But the camera manufacturers don't owe you anything. They aren't responsible for picking up the slack where your skills end. Also, there's a reason why your wish list isn't getting checked off each year. The cost of camera production and development is extremely high, but yet everyone still wants it cheap. Now, the fact that the price of the new Blackmagic Micro, the G2 that's about to come out, is the same as it was eight years ago when it was first released, despite inflation and in the advancement of technology, is unreal. But if you really think the camera company can give you everything and still keep it affordable, then you truly are dreaming. Now, I know a lot of people are mad right now that the new Blackmagic 6K doesn't have internal NDs, but where are they supposed to go? Now they fit in the body of the 6K Pro because it was a much smaller sensor, but the size of the full frame sensor in the new 6K is huge. So where are the internal filters supposed to sit when they're not in use? I mean, okay, Blackmagic could again develop an entirely new camera house that I know a lot of people want. Obviously, they're gonna try and get the most they can from the form factor that they've already developed while they continue to push the internal technology. To start completely from scratch every time is gonna send R&D costs through the roof and selling your black magics are costing as much as reds. And honestly, internal NDs, yeah, they're nice, but that's literally one of the easiest workarounds to overcome. You just slap an ND on the front of your lens and your problem's solved. Now, as far as IBIS and autofocus, people will say, well, why don't they just add it or develop it? Canon and Sony have it. Well, Canon and Sony have had decades to work on this technology, largely as a result of the stills photo division of their company, where it has paid for itself from the photography world. This isn't just something you can develop overnight and put in on your own if you're Blackmagic or Panasonic or whoever you're unhappy with at the moment. A lot of this technology, if you're not able to develop it overnight, which is generally the case, requires licensing. Codex, for example, require a licensing fee. ProRes is a patented property of Apple, and if Blackmagic wants to use it in their cameras, they have to pay fees to Apple, and that cost is gonna get passed on to you. The same is true with battery systems, with lens mounts. Canon is not gonna give access to the new RF mount to just anyone, and certainly not to the competition without huge royalty fees. So as you can see, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that we're not really privy to, and I'm sure that if some of these camera companies could give you everything that you wanted, they obviously would, but right now they either can't because they don't have access to it, or they can't afford it, or because they know the consumer will not pay for it. In the meantime, you're gonna have to make do. And considering the crap that we used to have to work with, I for one am pretty happy that we've got what we've got. And anything beyond that is just gravy. So shake it off, push yourself, study, practice, and shoot. I promise it will all pay off and maybe someday you'll find yourself on set with a massive, fully built out RE or RED and you'll be glad you learned to work within realistic expectations and understand the importance of manual camera control. And with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.